Hi guys, so today I want to finish the discussion about threads and specifically show you guys how to share data uh, among different threads. All right, so um, as I discussed, as we discussed already, um, threads are a lightweight, uh, a pro lightweight way to run uh, program on multiple processors or rather multiple cores of your processor and when you have multiple threads running each of them is going to have a separate set of registers and a separate stack or rather stack in different parts of the memory um, so that they can have um, they can execute your program kind of in different points of the program All right um, but shares also, but uh, sorry, threads also share a lot of the memory. So, for example, they will share all of the text data, meaning they both have access, or all the threads uh, within a program have access to the same source code. Um, there's not multiple copies of that source code; it's just one source code, and they just maintain um, separate uh, instruction uh, registers um, in their own register file to point to the different parts of that source code. They will also share uh, the data portion, which is which will include things like global and static variables. Um, they will also share heap. So basically, if you allocate something using calloc or malloc, um, that will be visible to all threads, as long as uh, the threads can get a pointer to that, um, to that memory location. They will also share things like open files and any, any dynamically loaded libraries. Yeah, so they kind of do share a lot. Um, the nice thing there is that if you make a change to a shared variable uh, on one thread, that change is made in a virtual memory and eventually copied into the cache used by another thread. Right? So the changes aren't necessarily immediate, but eventually a change to some memory location will propagate through the virtual memory using the OS uh, into the memory space of another thread. All right, so let's look at this in more detail. So on the right, we have an example from your book um, showing a threaded program that uh, shares some variables, okay? So we have global variables, which are basically variables declared outside of the scope of any function, okay? And any program um, or any function here has access to that variable. Okay, so that will get stored in the data section of, of the memory and will be shared between threads. Um, then we have local variables as opposed to global, which are particular to each function, right? So this integer i is only available within the main function, but not outside. This is not that different from local variables you guys have been using. And then we have static local variables, which are kind of a cool thing in that they are um, local to this particular function, but are shared within the different invocations of that function, right? So if you have two threads running this thread function, both of them would have access to this count variable uh, and would be able to kind of increment it uh, together, right? So the changes would, would be shared between the different threads. Um, and I'll show you guys an example of that, of that in a second. The one weird thing about threads, uh, well, maybe not weird, but just kind of specific, is that I, I mentioned they all have their own stack space, but those stacks are located in um, just in different places on in, in memory, right? So if one thread has a pointer to another thread stack, they can still use local variables in that stack. Let me give you guys an example, all right? So we have a pointer here, which is global. That means all the threads should be able to access it. Now, in the main thread, right, so the, so the running of main, right, is still, uh, it, it is just a thread, right, until we start more threads here. So both main is a thread and there will be two threads running this thread function, right? All of them share access to this pointer. Now, what happens to the pointer is that it gets pointed to messages, okay? So main threads declares some array uh, some array in messages, okay? It's a character pointer. And then we say that this pointer pointer is a pointer to the pointer of characters, 
Okay, so basically pointer saves the address of the memory array. Where is the memory array placed? Well, it is placed into the stack space of uh, the main function. Okay? So then we call the threads, we start the different threads, and the threads here are using um, the pointer variable. Okay? And then they can access one or the second element of that, of that array by passing in my ID which is the ID of the thread. Um, well, it's not the ID of the thread, it's the variable that, that's passed here as the argument, and then we're calling it my ID. It's not actually the OS thread ID, okay? So we're using that ID, which will be either zero or one. Uh, this comes from this for loop and gets passed here. Uh, to index pointer. Now pointer points to messages and messages is on the stack of main. Okay, so these threads from their stack are accessing some variable that's on the stack of the main thread. Okay, so you can kind of do this type of sharing. All right, let me show you guys an example of this in action. This is in CSCI 366 examples. It's a thread example. And what we'll do here in main is run, is run example five. And example five is defined up here. Now, what's different about this example is that we set up three types of variables. We have a global variable, we have a static variable, and we have a local variable. The global variable has to be defined outside of any function scope, but also above when we use it. So here in the for loop, we increment the global variable. If you declare this global variable, say, above main, uh, this function wouldn't have access to it. Okay, So we need to declare it above where we use it. Okay, so now inside this run example uh, thread function, we can increment the, increment the global variable. We can also increment the static variable, which is defined within the run example, given the static keyword. Okay? And finally, we have a local variable that will be just used by this thread. So as we run the thread, we are incrementing these variables, and we can see whether or not the changes are local or global to the different threads. So when we run it, we see the following output. Okay. What you can see is we're running one thread and the red thread, and then because of the code we set up before, um, the yellow thread cannot enter this loop until it can acquire the semaphore. So we have uh, the incrementing in the red thread, and then in the yellow thread. Okay, so what happens? Well, all the variables start at zero. Global variable gets incremented to one, static variable to one, and local variable to one, and that's what we're printing out over here. Then we run the loop again, and you can see that the global variable, static variable, and local variable have both have all incremented again. Now, when it comes to the other thread, the other thread that enters the loop and keeps incrementing the global variable because it is global, so the changes that the first thread made to it are reflected in the second thread, which then increases the value to three and then four, okay? The same thing happens for the static variable where, we, where it keeps getting incremented. However, the local variable is just in the scope of this function, and so it gets initialized again, and so the second thread increments it again to one and again to two, okay? So this is an example with, um, um, with integer variables, but of course, as in the example on the slides, we can use pointers, which can point to some to different memory locations. And for example, you can use it to pass an array into, a pointer to an array into these different functions. And then the different threads running those functions can access the same uh, memory location of the array. Right? The same would be true if you set up a pointer to a uh, an array, for example, that was allocated using malloc. All right, so that's a quick example of how you can share data in threads. I hope you guys liked it. That's basically all you're going to need to implement your programming assignment three. And so I hope you are having fun with that. All right, thank you.